Well, for a more detailed look at the implications of the Chinese government's proposed new regulations on coal, I'm joined in the studio by Gavin Went, who's the senior resource analyst at Research House Mine Life. Gavin, welcome to the program. Pleasure. Whatever the impact on coal exports, Australia's second biggest customer is saying that coal is very bad for the environment. Can the coal industry ignore that? Well, that's certainly part of the, uh, the current debate. That's certainly part of their position. Um, it's reflective of, I guess, a growing uh, movement in uh, advanced economies over recent years to focus more on air quality and emissions regulations. And, and, and we've seen this in the United States. Barack Obama, you know, one could be said is, uh, is, is quite anti-coal. Um, but in the case of the United States, of course, they've got uh, shale, uh, shale gas uh, to, to fall back on, so they have alternatives. But this is not something new. I think uh, uh, with these types of uh, discussions, though, there are always other motivations. And, of course, China's... Uh, coal industry has been suffering significantly, like its iron ore industry has over recent years, as a result of a, uh, a, a, a burgeoning uh, export market in terms of Australian coal that's flooding into China, and China's uh, coal participants, their coal miners, are suffering significantly. So they're a very powerful lobby group, and they would certainly be lob lobbying the Chinese. So this is a political move to, to get uh, Chinese coal into Chinese power stations? Well, absolutely. And, and we can draw parallels between where the coal industry is uh, now and also the iron ore industry. I mean, China has talked also in similar terms about their steel industry, about using higher quality iron ore, about wanting to clean up their steel industry industry, um, uh, I guess, get rid of some, uh, a lot of smaller, heavily polluting players. Essentially what that's all about is, is bringing the steel industry more under government control and concentrating production within, uh, I guess, larger uh, players. Well, yeah. well, given that China has made this big statement on pollution, uh, is Chinese coal regarded as low emission coal? Well, Chinese coal is, is fairly ordinary, so, uh, you know, like, like their iron ore is. So, um, you know, Australian product quality is very, very good. So one would imagine that uh, the, the, the country that's going to be impacted the most from this initially is Indonesia, which produces very low quality coal, probably similar to what China produces. Australia has options in terms of being able to, I guess, upgrade the coal through washing and that sort of thing. That will add to costs. But I think uh, that's something that's manageable. At the end of the day, with China, they can't have uh, low coal prices, which would obviously be benefiting their, their power stations, and at the same time purchase a lot of coal uh, from their domestic uh, producers. So which Australian companies will be affected then if, if this uh, ban on, on the, the, uh, the dirty coal, for want of a better way to put it, comes in? Well, it's, it's interesting. I mean, as, as was, uh, has been discussed today, I mean, the Hunter Valley predominantly at this stage. I mean, we don't even know if the Chinese ultimately are going to implement these regulations. I mean, if we go back to last year, the Chinese were talking similarly about restrictions on coal quality. At that stage, it was targeted primarily at uh, Indonesia. Um, that is yet to be implemented. So these this particular recommendation is far from actually becoming a reality. But let's assume that it does. Um, Australia is a reliable... Uh, provider of high quality coal. Um, there are various ways around this, mainly by washing the coal and getting it into China. But again, the, the major motivation out of all this for the Chinese, in, in, in many respects, is to be able to provide a lifeline for their domestic producers. So, so would it be companies like, let's say, BHP, or would it be Whitehaven, or some of the smaller players? Well, that hurt, or well in, in the context of uh, the Hunter Valley, which is a mm -hmm. primarily a thermal coal producing uh, region, you would probably look at companies like uh, Rio Tinto, for example. Um, but again, uh, you know, there, there are ways in which I think the, uh, the Australian coal industry would be able to, able to manage this. We've seen the price of coal drop dramatically in recent months and some types of coal, the price is more than halved. Is that just cyclical gyration or as the world concentrates on global warming, is it a move away from coal? Well, it's a very interesting question, I think. And uh, look, it's, 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 it's a bit of both. I mean, certainly we're, we're used to in Australia seeing, uh, you know, a boom and bust environment with respect to commodities. And coal, uh, like iron ore now, uh, over, the, over the last probably five to six years, represents a, a typical boom and bust situation. GFC, record prices, now we're looking at 
uh, you know, sort of pretty close to, to record lows in, in the context of the last couple of decades. However, um, there is a broader issue as far as coal is concerned. As we talked about at the beginning with the United States moving more away from a, a reliance on coal and towards other alternative energy sources such as, such as gas, um, uh, there is certainly a situation where um, this is a big picture issue as far as coal is concerned, as far as thermal coal is concerned. And most advanced economies are looking at this right now. Um, it's a different situation in emerging economies because they probably don't have a lot of uh, no choices. Yeah, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, I think the, the broader outlook for thermal coal prices is not fantastic. There's no shortage of the stuff. I mean, you can go practically anywhere in the world and dig up thermal coal. It just depends on the quality. Um, we are out of time. I'm sources. sorry, I'm going to have to wrap you up there, but very interesting topic, and I'm sure there's a lot more to say on this. Gavin Went, thank you very much for your time. Pleasure.